Welcome other All Stars. Today's fun project. Today with this 05 Acura MDX here. Uh, car comes in. I hook up the scanner. I've got a P0175 and a P0172 code. Those are the only two codes I, I read and both of those are rich codes. So, you know, you think about what could cause a rich condition. Uh, excess fuel pressure could. Let's say there's a uh, dirty MAF sensor or our MAP sensor is the other one. MAF would be mass airflow. It might be calculating there's too much air coming in, not enough fuel, you know, all those kind of crazy things. Uh, an oxygen, a bad oxygen sensor could report something false. Uh, this has the air fuel, they call them air fuel sensors, same basic principle. Um, it wants to be, I think it's like one lambda, they call or something like that, but whatever. So I start to go to town, I check the MAP sensor, the, mass, um, the manifold absolute pressure sensor, and everything's in spec. I run the vacuum to it, you know, I've got the 19, 21 pound vacuum, I check the vacuum. That's looking good. Everything seems to look good. I'm going to take you inside the engine compartment and show you basically everything that I checked and what I finally found before I wound up jumping off a bridge or blowing this thing up to uh, Kingdom Calm here is uh, pretty interesting. Basically what's happening here is a situation where the valves are out of adjustment. Now this has a 3.5 liter engine and um, you know it's like uh, Monday morning quarterback it sounds so easy right now just to say hey that's the problem but what apparently happened here is or happens with these Honda Acura engines the, the heads obviously are aluminum and over time this car I think at the time had about hundred and fifty six thousand miles on it and the uh, valves actually get kind of the valve seats get worn and pushed up into the head so the valve clearance is called valve lash and basically the valve is not fully closing especially on the exhaust side so what happens is the exhaust valve is you know and we're not talking like that much we're talking thousandths of an inch it stays open and exhaust gases are pushed back or intake any anytime there's a combustion uh, event those fumes are being pushed back in through the exhaust valve, past the exhaust valve, into the exhaust stream, and the uh, air fuel sensors are reading a rich condition because there's unburned fuel in there. Here's what I'm explaining here with the theory, what I'm getting at, what I believe is happening. Um, so here we have the intake valve and the exhaust valve. Now, I uh, apologize about my artwork if this seems uh, vulgar. Just don't mind me. <laughs> Anyhow, here's the piston. So here's the piston head. Here's a valve. This would be seated right up here at the valve seats right there. So that one would be tight or, you know, seated, adjusted properly. Where here we have an exhaust valve and there would be two of these on that engine. And this, this is the top of the uh, cylinder head right here, right up in here. And as you see this gap right in here, okay, so it's not, I'm over exaggerating what's going on in there. You know, obviously the gap wouldn't be this big. On an intake stroke, the fuel is coming in. I'm representing fuel here as red. So it would come in with the air, obviously, on the intake. And on the uh, combustion stroke, this piston would be moving in this direction. So what I believe is happening is unburned fuel, raw fuel, is getting past the valve here, past the exhaust valve side. Unburned fuel, raw fuel is getting in past the valve, the exhaust valve. The O2 is doing its job. It's saying, hey, the car is running rich. The PCM is trying to cut back on the fuel. And there we go. So by adjusting these valves properly when they're seated in here where they should be, um, that'll prevent this from happening on the combustion stroke. So what I wound up doing is take everything apart, the, you know, the manifold comes off, intake manifold, all that good stuff. I, may, I have footage of that stuff. I don't know how long and boring I want to make the video. But anyway, I had to do a valve adjustment on this car. So you pull the coils, 
you pull the um, intake manifold, all that fun stuff. I maybe can do a quick, uh, if I can edit it right, you know, I like to have details in there, how to set the, uh, the valves, adjust the valves anyway. So anyway, um, I did that and I couldn't believe it, man. It was done. The check engine light's gone. I have some fuel trim uh, numbers I can show you that I recorded on video to prove that uh, I'm not getting, I think I was getting like negative 16, negative 18 or more uh, as far as fuel trim numbers. The only thing I did not actually check and my PIDs on the uh, scanner, I didn't have any fuel pressure uh, readings or, or uh, sensors so I didn't know what it was. It's a real pain in the ass to have to check the fuel pressure on these things. I wasn't going back to the tank. There is a line. I, you could cut it up here. I'll, I'll show you where it's at. Sorry about the wind here. I hope the mic's not crackling too bad. But um, you could put a T-fitting in there and hook your pressure gauge to that. I didn't go to that route. Um, you could, though, if you really thought it was excess fuel pressure. Because I did a ton of diagnostics before I replaced any parts um, on the car. So basically, I got the entire thing done. The only parts I did need, obviously, I replaced all the, uh, the intake manifold gasket, the plenum gaskets, that kind of thing. But everything else, you know, I didn't start changing air fuel uh, sensors, didn't change out the map sensor. You know, you could start going crazy with all these different sensors and um, it's, it fixed the problem. So I was really relieved when it was done. It actually took me a couple days to figure this one out. It's one of the toughest ones that I've ever had to do. Um, and I've been, you know, tinkering with cars for a long time now, over 20 years. So anyhow, uh, let's go under the hood, enough rambling. I pretty much gave away what the problem is. So if you have one of these Hondas or Acuras and it's got the 3.5, you have this issue with those trouble codes, I would highly suggest uh, finding out when the last valve adjustment was done and to get it done and hopefully in this video, I can give you the specs. Like I said, I have hours and hours of footage and uh, a lot of it was me cursing, but I don't know if that'll make it in. All right, guys. Thanks for watching and subscribing. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think of this awesome diagnostic. I got to pat myself on the shoulder for this one and uh, I'll see you. All right. So I've got the ignition on, scanners plugged in and uh, check engine lights been on while the car's running. It's cold right now. And we're coming up with uh, two codes, P0175 and 0172. System 2 rich, that's the 175. And the 172, System 2 rich. So we're coming up with both. Well, let's look at these fuel trim numbers after it goes in close. Look, I'll, loop, I'll fire it up. So idling around 1200. Well, let's look at our, our data. Actually, it's at 1,000. 54. We'll have to wait for it to go in a closed loop here. Closed loop means it's warmed up, basically. We're in open loop. All right, the idle's come down now. I think it's in closed loop. Short-term fuel trim. Wow, it's really pulling away a lot of fuel. Let me give it some throttle and see if that changes. I'm going to put it to about three grand. Let's see what happens. Okay. All right, so let's look under the hood here. Uh, this little stinker was with me the entire time. Chaos was around, let me tell you. So anyway, here's that fuel pressure. Uh, we're on the driver's side. There's the uh, brake master cylinder. This line right back here, you could tap into this, and uh, that goes right to the fuel rail, this rubber hose. You could tap your uh, fuel gauge into that if you wanted to. But up here is the map sensor. So I checked the voltage on this. Everything was in spec, you know, power ground uh, signal. Uh, I, had, I had vacuum, uh, 19, 20 pounds of vacuum when I checked the, um, the vacuum. Here's the intake 
which I removed. You have to remove this cover. Then you remove the plenum here. And uh, the coils have to come out. And you got the three back there, three cylinders back there. They come out. Um, the fuel injectors could stay. I didn't have to remove the injectors. And um, I remember this was a little tricky down here. Some of the, the harness, the wire harness around in here that goes down in there, that all has to get pushed out of the way. But anyway, it's not too bad a job, really, uh, if you have a little bit of experience. Right here, hopefully in the video, you'll see that part. There's a little uh, cover, a little access rubber cover here on the cam cover. So you open that up, and as you spin the engine over, you can see uh, there's n it's numbered. So you know what cylinder you're on, so you know which valves to set. So that makes that really easy. You got one through six. So that's not bad. And uh, anyhow, yeah, the air filter was clean. You also want to check for a clogged air filter. You know, maybe it's not the engine's not getting enough air or an obstruction in there. You never know. Um, somebody leaves a rag or something, right? But um, yeah, that was fine. So like I said, the map sensor was reading fine. And uh, that's basically what it came down to. It came down to where the valve lash, it, it was just too tight. Um, you know, the, the rocker is sitting right down on there. So when you grab the, the rockers and you pull up and down, I think three or four out of the six had zero lash, which is not good. It had probably negative. It, it had no play in there. There was no gap when it should have a gap. So that's not allowing the, um, the valves to come all the way up, you know, the seat to seat inside the, the head. Anyway, that's what I wanted to show you guys. And I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the video. This is the driver side, that's the passenger side. First thing I'll do is remove the intake here for the air cleaner. I'm gonna remove the uh, harness here, for the connector for the map sensor. This is the um, air temperature sensor down here. There's a PCV um, line right back in here. Not sure if you can see it. Let me get my flashlight. Okay, we'll disconnect that. There's a couple of uh, throttle body hoses, some more vacuum hoses, and you'll see it all. There's some coolant lines here. We'll disconnect that. Need to remove the the intake cover plate. I already got the bolts loose here. Let's see if I can probably pull that up with one hand. So let me see if I can show you that. Uh, I've got one. Hold on a second. There's about 10 bolts and a couple of nuts here. There's like one nut here, there's a stud, and then there's one here, there's a stud. So just remove all those. This is the cover plate. Well, obviously, there's a gasket here. I've got the replacement. I've got the replacement gasket for this. And then to remove the intake, we're going to take these bolts out that are down in here. So we'll remove these, get the intake off. And then the valve covers here, what I did was I removed the, the harness that was in the way I disconnected it. There's a bracket right here that bolts to the side of the engine, this bolt right here. So remove that, disconnected the uh, connectors for the oxygen sensors. And then there's a bar that goes across here with two bolts, one here, one here. Remove that, unclip this harness. This is the uh, coils for the coils. Unplug the coils. On, this is on the front. Remove the three coils. I removed the three spark plugs. And then there's these bolts that go around the uh, outside here of the valve cover. So you'll see that. So you got your six cylinders. One, two, three, and cylinder four, five, and six right here. So I've got this harness out of my way. Got the bolts loose. And basically this whole valve cover will just lift out. But I am going to take the intake off because you cannot get to the back valve cover with the intake in the way. So that will be the next step. I'm going to remove the intake. And then I'll show you the details right down in here. There's a little access hole 
right here. And that's how you're going to find the timing marks for the uh, cylinders to set the valve to adjust the valves. And if you need to know which engine you have in your car, let me zoom in. Look right down in here. This is the uh, I think it's a J35A5. Oop, focus right there. So that's which which model engine 3.5 you have. Up here we have the sticker on the top of the hood. This is a vehicle mission sticker, and our valve lash is 0.22, give or take 0.02 millimeters, and the exhaust 0.30, and that's give or take 0.02 millimeters. And these are cold. Very important that these valves are adjusted with the engine ice cold. Let it sit overnight. Cold is in room temperature, you know, air temperature cold. Okay, here are the two lines under the throttle body. You've got this one here, which goes back into the here, which is a tube going back to the PCV into the back of the valve cover. And then you got this other one right here, which I'll disconnect now. And I think I mentioned removing the, the EVAP solenoid right here. So we'll unhook that, disconnect it. There's little tabs on these things here on the back back here where my forefinger is just push in and pull up and that comes off and then there's two bolts these look like tens 10 millimeter so right there we'll get that off disconnect that there's a couple of vacuum lines back here this one goes to the brake booster the big one and then you've got this small u-shaped vacuum line right there which runs across here to a line and I disconnected it right here at this point that goes to the um, the front engine mount so the front engine the engine mounts on this car are vacuum controlled also disconnect the throttle body it just has an electronic throttle body on it so you push in on this gray tab here and then this white piece here pulls forward and then you can uh, after that's forward, you can pull this off. So get that disconnected. All right, so you want to move, remove these two lines that coming off the bottom of the throttle body down here. They're coolant lines. So I've got this one plugged off. It was wet. And uh, this one is fairly dry right now. So just put a, something in there to keep it from dripping out. Not much will spill, but just get it out of the way. Okay, I got these bolts loose and I'm pulling them out. They're pretty long. I'd say they're probably at least four inches. So we'll get all these out and then I can lift the um, intake off. Don't forget to remove the two nuts with the bolts right here. There's seven bolts and then two nuts. One on here and then one back there. These can stay. This is for the EGR. All right, I got the PCV hose over here disconnected and everything should be loose now. So I'm gonna wiggle it and pull straight up and then back. Let's take this over to the bench. Here's what that looks like. And here's the bottom. Huh, looks like we got a little leaky leak right here. Didn't show up on the smoke test though. See that? Interesting. Look into that a little further. All right, let's pull the old gasket off the top here. We've got a replacement for this. And then what I'm gonna do is plug, put some rags in these holes, in these intake holes down in here. Because we don't want anything to drop inside the engine. That's sort of important. All right, in order to get this back harness off, which is covering the rear valve cover. I had to loosen up three bolts. There's one here, there's one back here, which I can't film, and there's one right back in here. So there's three bolts and that'll get loose. Then I disconnected the uh, fuel injectors here on the front, on the back. I'm gonna have to disconnect these three fuel injectors and then pop these covers open, disconnect the alternator wire right here so that this whole harness this is the front injection 
or coil harness can slip out right through here and then I can lift this whole thing up a little bit with a bungee. And this is an important one right here. This bolt that's sticking out back there, that one right there. Yeah, I took that out. That's a, uh, I think it's a 12 millimeter. That holds the bracket for this back harness. So there's a bracket right here. Let me see if I can get that film for you. Right there, that bracket is bolted to that, which makes this a little bit more flexible here. You gotta remove this ground wire on the back harness with that bolt right there. It looks like a eight millimeter. So I get this sucker out. Okay, right down there is the cam sensor. I'm gonna pop that off right here. That's this short, short little wire off the connector here. 